Well, good morning and welcome back to the summit. I hope you had a uh, terrific day yesterday. I thought it was absolutely spectacular. Our speakers, uh, I thought, were just marvelous yesterday. And I'm pleased to say that we have a great lineup of speakers today. And the first speaker we have today is a good friend and someone that I personally admire and respect, and that is Wes Bush. Wes Bush is the chairman, chief executive officer, and he is president of the Northrop Grumman Corporation. And now first, a word or two about Northrop Grumman, again, a company I know personally know quite a bit about. Northrop Grumman is a leader in the global security market. They provide innovative systems, products, and solutions in autonomous systems, cyber, C4ISR, strike, logistics, and modernization for customers literally around the world. And importantly, they are one of the principal sponsors of the Global Grand Challenges for Engineering Summit. I mean, without them, we could not have this summit. So West Bush earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in electrical engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He also completed the University of California Los Angeles Executive Management Program. I can tell you that Northrop Grumman and West Bush are highly regarded uh, by uh, everyone in the uh, community, in their peer community. They're also highly regarded by their customers and it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce you to Mr. Wes Bush. Wes? Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, good, Gordon. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see that uh, 8.15 is not too early for many of you to be here. So let me begin by uh, commending the great work of the National Academy of Engineering the United Kingdom's Royal Academy of Engineering and the Chinese Academy of Engineering. Northrop Grumman is very proud to join you in supporting this great event. And it really is tremendous to see so many students participating in the summit and so many folks being brought together from around the globe. And my remarks this morning are primarily directed at the students. Let me start by saying whatever field of technology that you're studying, you are doing so at an absolutely amazing time and if you didn't already know that, I think your participation in the summit has really demonstrated the, just the degree of change and opportunity that we all see in front of us. The pace of discovery and innovation is absolutely incredible. And our world needs it. Our world needs the benefit of what science and engineering can bring to help humankind address some very, very tough challenges. For example, the 14 great challenges, the grand challenges, laid out by the National Academy of Engineering. The men and women of Northrop Grumman feel very fortunate to be a part of a company that brings advanced technologies to our customers who work so hard to promote global security. But the engineering excellence that we apply to security technologies translates to other fields as well. For example, we help to explore the universe. Many of you have probably heard of the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the next generation of space observatory. It'll be 100 times more powerful than Hubble. And we're building the James Webb Space Telescope at Northrop Grumman. This instrument is truly a time machine, if you think about the way that it functions, as it enables us to see our universe as it was many billions of years ago, approaching the period right after the Big Bang. Now, Hubble was a huge step forward for our understanding of the, with, of the universe. And with it, we learned about some very complex things. We learned about dark matter, black holes, planet formation, and we got a much better idea about the actual age of our universe. But Hubble's limitations preclude us from seeing far enough back in time to develop our understanding of the formation of the universe or to adequately assess new things that we're finding, like exoplanets. James Webb will address those limitations, and we're due to launch in about two years. It will be one of the most exciting times ever in astrophysics. It's just an example of what we do in our company, our company has about 67,000 people, and more than 30,000 of us are degreed scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and technologists. It really is an incredibly exciting place to work. And that excitement is built around realizing the positive impact of science and technology. Each of you has the opportunity to further advance that impact in whichever field you may elect to pursue 
as you start your careers. Let me take a few moments to offer some perspectives as you proceed through college and then take this big next step beyond college. First, by now most of you have come to understand just how hard an engineering and broadly, more broadly the technology curriculums can be. I will tell you it was really hard when I was doing it 35 years ago and I know it's gotten a lot harder since then. But despite that difficulty, despite that challenge, stick with it. It will really pay off for you. It will prepare you like no other form of study incredibly well for anything that you choose to do over the course of your career. The discipline that you're gaining on how to solve problems, how to fully develop new ideas, how to work together to make new things happen, that is incredibly valuable. Our world needs more graduates in these fields, and each of you are here because you have a passion and you've been identified as an individual with great potential to contribute in this way. Secondly, keep an open mind about where your career is going to take you. Hands-on engineering is fun and it's fulfilling, and you may convince yourselves that you want to only do that for your entire career, and hopefully many of you do convince yourselves of that because an engineering career is a fabulous career. But don't be afraid to take the advice of the mentors that you trust and if they encourage you to try some other roles. You could very well find new ways to contribute and to leverage your abilities and to grow as a person. So keep an open mind. As I said before, engineering and technology curriculum prepares you well to do just about anything. Lastly, a piece of advice, stay grounded in your values and recognize your responsibilities. With the rapid advances that we're all working to create, we together have a big responsibility to ensure that the capabilities that we create serve the good of humankind. Few will understand the newly created capabilities the way that you will understand them. And you should see that unique perspective as being reflective of the inherent responsibility you will shoulder in applying a high set of values in scientific and technological decision making. We are all excited about the future that you will create. You're clearly well on your way to creating it already, and your participation in this summit, I think, puts an exclamation point on that. Take full advantage of the time that you have both here at the summit, events like this, but especially the time that you have while in college with your professors and your classmates. This is truly a formative time in life, and taking full advantage of that environment is something that you never regret. And then after college, stay connected with them. As you move forward, reach out, help them, and seek their advice and their help. And over time, find a way to say thank you to the great people who are making your educations possible. As you ponder the grand challenges that you will be taking on, always remember that you are training to be more than engineers and more than technologists. You are training to be leaders for our future, and our world is counting on your leadership. Enjoy the summit. I'm glad you're all here. This is a great thing to be doing. Have fun today. Thank you for having me.